shot a beautiful personality with the best hair. And despite things being absolutely all over the place right now, I would still kind of like to acknowledge Dino Simber this year. And that's nothing I can't solve by just looking at what my prime video suggestions are. We found plenty of uh, interesting movies that way, such as today's feature, Dinosaur Hotel. Which, like many Amazon Prime suggestions before it, has a name that certainly caught my eye. And like several Asylum films, has a very impressive looking DVD cover. And it looks like that's where 60% of the movie's budget went. Because it is absolutely not representative of the movie within. In Dinosaur Hotel, there is a hotel with dinosaurs. You see, there is a secret underground game show where contestants compete to win money. The competition being that they have to survive one night in Dinosaur Hotel. Which sounds boring. So, of course, they threw some layers on top just to keep things interesting. So, let's take a look at Dinosaur Hotel. See if that worked. We open up to that familiar, dimly lit, but strangely green Room of Terror, where Ruby, played by Amy Marie Higgum, desperately calls for help over the radio. Don't worry, her friend Jack, played by uh, name not provided, claims he found a way out through the surrounding forest. Please hurry! <laughs> Over. So yeah, Jack ain't that nimble or quick no more, so she must run, terrified of whatever she might find. <sighs> or not find? I know they say less is more, but come on. Wondering what's going on? Have no fear. Another random, only slightly less important character pops up like, Hey! Five minutes left and the game is over, so all they gotta do is live. And this Ball floats in like, ooh, who's gonna win the grand prize? But this all begs the question, what are they trying to survive against? <laughs> CGI dinosaurs of uh, questionable quality. The renders are alright, the models are high enough quality, but it looks like they saved a bunch of money by not hiring any of those pesky, expensive, skilled animators. So the raptor kills whoever this is, and Ruby calmly flees outside, leaving the door wide open like there isn't a poorly animated monster back there, and is like, cool, guess I won the game. We hope you enjoyed your stay. Run this right. Lady, you were just told five minutes and it's barely been 30 seconds. But that's plenty of time for a ridiculously stiff T-Rex to show up and kill her. Thus, the movie proper can start. I just want these feelings to go away. I'll get over it. Just like death and taxes, bad cinema is just a fact of life. Just like we're gonna have to deal with the fact that this is our protagonist for this tale, Sienna, played by Chrissy Wuna. She's here telling her therapist, played by Stephen Staley, that she is suffering from bad times. Husband gone, two kids, and more! And the worst thing is thinking about what I'm gonna do with finances. She's broke, poor, unable to make ends meet, as she tells her therapist. Hey, writers, a uh, quick tip for you. Poor people, we don't have therapists. We can tell our problems to people who don't give a shit about it for free. You know what they say, find a job that doesn't feel like a job. Yeah, YouTube kind of ruined that one for me. But she's like, what? Effort? <laughs> Fuck that! I just don't have the time or the resources anymore. <sighs> Learning useful, marketable skills just sounds so... pedestrian. Let alone the energy. And it takes effort! No, 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 thank you! It's already hard enough trying to find someone else to set up my GoFundMe. You can't let this impact your life, your future, you need to start thinking about what makes you happy now, Sienna. And the kids? She's, she's got two of them. Well, it's kind of important. I assumed. I mean, haven't you got anyone that could help relieve the stress of the kids? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. They do think of the children as a burden. It's just me. Spoiler alert, she has a babysitter. And I feel like everyone just wants me to move on and get over it at this point. 
Well, I consider we just spent about as long listening to you complain about these difficulties that aren't all that uncommon as we did watching two women get eaten alive by dinosaurs, I'd say it's about dino time. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Jeez, okay, if you're really trying this hard to make me care about this woman, maybe give her a facial expression that's something other than smug self-righteousness. But maybe she's right about not having anyone to rely on because her babysitter, Lee, played by also not listed, calls her up like, Hey, I've got crap to do, shifts up, so why don't you try taking care of your kids for a change? Thus, by the time she gets home, Lee is already gone, and we are introduced to the offspring, Peter, played by Junior Wuna, and Maddie, played by Ruby Wuna. First order of business, where's Lee? She left in a hot day or something. Of course she did. Ah, yes, uh, the, the, uh, the, the child actors. It, it, it should be mentioned, uh, they're, they're not very, very good. And I mean, they, they, to be fair, to be fair, they, they are very young, so there's that. And also, it's not like they're that much worse than everyone else in this movie. Kids, will one of you get that for me, please? And if it's Lee, no, she's not getting paid. Get what? What are you braiding your kids for? Nothing is happening. No. Oh, Mom. Hello? Did they just forget to put the phone ringing sound effect early enough in that scene? And through all the time making this movie from early draft to final print burnt on DVDs, no one caught that? This is a phone call from Evil Secret Man. You can tell he's evil from the evil music, dark purple lighting, and the alcohol he has been drinking. Dean, played by Alexander John. He tells her, Sienna, baby, listen, you have been selected as one of the lucky contestants of our fabulous game show, Dinosaur Hotel. I apply for a lot of things online. Um, can you just tell me a bit more about it? Oh god, that's where her finances went. She dumped all of her savings into NFTs. He tells her they'll fill in the details with an email. Because when you're collecting victims for your snuff project, I always leave a digital forensics trail a mile long. Also, the email was kind of pointless anyway, as Sienna discovers it doesn't tell her diddly about what she's actually going to be doing at the Dinosaur Hotel. But it does have this tidbit of info. £100,000. Grand prize. <gasps> that's it? I, I mean, if you're broke as shit, it's nice and all, but I mean, this movie was made in 2021. 100,000 pounds wasn't even that much money even then. I mean, what is she gonna do with it? Pay her therapist? But oh darn it, if she wants to go to Dinosaur Hotel, she's gonna have to figure out what to do with the children. So she calls Lee. You know the struggles I've been having with money recently. Help me out. I would if I could be on a boat. I am meeting a new guy tonight. But come on! Watch my kids! A after all, I'm broke! I'll pay you double. How about that? With what? You have to win first before they give you the money. They don't give you half now and then half if you survive Dinosaur Hotel. So she's got a problem. She needs that money, but oh darn it, her kids have no one to watch them. Not to worry. They come up with a great idea. Bring them along too! No, it strictly says no guess. And the best way to ensure that you're gonna win that prize money is by violating the rules as soon as you step on the premises. The kids are like, nah, it'll be fine. And Sienna's like, okay, as long as she can keep them hidden and no one finds out. And as such, as soon as she arrives, she hauls both her kids right in front of 343 Guilty Spark over here. And who might your guests be? Oh. My kids, I'm sorry. Which you'd think would mean they'd tell her to get your ass out of here, you just violated the rules, you're not allowed to participate in Dinosaur Hotel. But this movie is not nearly that merciful. So Orbitron pays a clear violation no mind and allows Sienna to bring her children into Dinosaur Hotel, where likewise she makes no attempt to hide her offspring before running into someone else. Zara, played by Chelsea Greenwood, dressed up like Jill Valentine. As luck would have it, she also doesn't seem to care that a competitor has clearly broken the rules before the game even starts. More importantly, just what even are they doing anyway? Any idea of the obstacles for the game yet? No idea, but rumor has it it's something big. I'm not that big. Let's be clear, ladies. If this movie was Godzilla Hotel, you'd have a lot harder time stretching it out to the whopping 87 minutes. Anyway, time to stash the kids where no one will ever see them and get ready to win the grand prize in the hit TV show, Dinosaur Hotel. Why is it called the Dinosaur Hotel? 
I have no idea. You know, come to think of it, there is surprisingly little evidence in this area that giant damn dinosaurs are stomping around. No huge footprints, piles of crap, nothing! Sometime later, the bot floats in like, Hey, Sienna, game's about to start. So she heads to the dining room, where we meet the rest of our hapless victims. Laura, played by Sophia Lacey, Jenny, played by Nicole Nabby, and Sam, played by Kate Snatson. Of course, only one of you will leave the Dinosaur Hotel a winner. And with how vague they've been, good luck figuring out what you're supposed to do, as the bot can barely piece together the basic concept of a contest. What are the challenges exactly? That will remain a mystery until the grand unveiling. Ladies, ladies, please. We've got two minutes to go and I don't want to spoil it. You're going to get eaten alive by dinosaurs. Because the grand unveiling is right now. But we got to set this up so Reese Ball escorts our five-course meal outside the hotel for said grand unveiling. Oh, real quick, like and subscribe. I have to say that it's the law. Is this a holocrop or something? Oh please, as if that CGI is any good. The other CGI monstrosity assures them that it's all real, and hardly anyone can believe it! Even the children who can clearly see this from the room's window. Is that a dinosaur? I don't know. And at least they're more accurate than the people who named the hotel. Anyway, back to the dining room so Ping Pong Pete can prepare the players. First of all, we'll explain they won't be able to call for help because there's a handy dandy cell phone blocker that they've turned on. How inconvenient! But if that's not bad enough. Mum said we have to stay in the room and we promise. We promise a lot of things. The snot-nosed little brats decide to just say fuck it and leave. Yeah, you see that giant dangerous carnivorous animal? Well, let's run towards it! They got a long career ahead in horror, I can tell. While they skedaddle, Mecha Beholder explains that there's random stuff around the hotel to help them win. Weapons, walkie-talkies, that sort of thing. Please use these when found to help yourself survive the longest. Survive? Oh, don't worry about it. We all know the only thing that actually helps is plot armor. How do you know only one of us is going to make it to the end? It's like, what's going to stop the others? Death. Oh, Spoiler alert, robot! Hearing this, Jenny decides to just say fucking leave, but on her way out, she is approached by a velociraptor. Tripping over nothing, it looks like the end, but do not fear, for everyone else has come here to do what they can to help. <laughs> Themselves! Fortunately, they cheaped out on rendering the raptor for the next few shots, giving Jenny the chance to escape. Also, while the kids have had absolutely no issues walking all the way out to this nifty dinosaur cave, as soon as Laura freaks out and runs into the parking lot, oh, would you look at that, the T-Rex shows up! <laughs> Anyone else feel like the 100,000 is considerably less worth it at this point? Because none of them think to bring that point up as they flee in terror and run right into Cambot, who's like, Hey, grats, dudes! You're that much closer to winning the grand prize of not all that much money. Sienna is more concerned about the well-being of her kids, though. Anyone who has walked into the Dinosaur Hotel is just as much a part of the competition as anyone else. Well, this just got a hell of a lot darker all of a sudden. Sienna's like, no, they did not sign up for this. But Orbitz over here is like, rules is rules! Jesus, did the CGI guys just half-ass the whole way through? I'm pretty sure she was supposed to make contact there. What do you mean your kids are upstairs? My kids are upstairs. What the hell do you think she meant? But you know who else is upstairs? Jenny. Having deftly escaped the disappearing Dinanichus, she's the first to find a useful item. A walkie-talkie. Coincidentally, right before Sienna finds one on her way to try and get her kids. How convenient. Look, I've been waiting upstairs in one of the bedrooms, which is gross, by the way. Gross? How? The hotel is pretty spotless considering how many people got eaten alive in it. Jenny's plan is to rush to her car and get the hell out of here. Zara's plan is to do, uh, something. And Sienna's plan runs into a snag when she teleports back to her room only to find out her children are missing. Even worse, they got separated as Peter decided to delve deeper into the dinosaur depths while Maddie stayed behind fearing what lies within. And she ends up 
finding the uh, creature she was looking for in the first place, and is suddenly terrified of it. Likewise, when Peter spots it, he's also scared. Or supposed to be, but uh, forget the kids for now. Jenny has made it to her car. But oh darn it, it appears along with the magic cell phone no workifier, they have a similar technology to keep the cars from working. It's a horror movie, you know how it works. But now she's trapped, surrounded by dinosaur sound effects. It's up for debate if seeing the monster is scarier than not, but I can tell you this much, not seeing it is clearly cheaper. It is kind of obvious when they pull this shit during full daylight, so it's suddenly nightfall, and Jenny tells Sienna that the cars don't work, so she plans to go back inside. But what's this? The doors are locked! But looky here, Maddie has made it back as well, and the T-Rex has also made it back. Hey, you got this? Cool, cool, I'm, I'm busy with something. Hearing the back door maybe open, Jenny instructs Maddie to head to the back to get inside. And uh, the T-Rex doesn't notice. Hasn't moved an inch in any direction. <laughs> Which really makes it seem a lot less like she sacrificed herself heroically to save the children. More like she's just kind of a fucking idiot. Continuing to not see dinosaurs in scenes that would work so much better if there were dinosaurs, Sienna screams at Maddie to run up the stairs as fast as she can, so she can definitely escape from nothing! But I guess they couldn't get away with simply omitting the raptor from the kitchen with Zara and Sam, so they do get to flee from the creature, and when Zara dives over the reception counter, she discovers something far better than a walkie-talkie. A gun! Hey! <laughs> wonder. If we're shooting at dinosaurs, would it actually work better if we had birdshot? Well, that takes care of that dinosaur, giving everyone a chance to talk about what to do next. There's only us left now. I'm going by the time. We have approximately six hours left until sunrise. Then it's all finally over. So Peter's been out there for about, oh, 18 hours. <laughs> Jesus fuck, that kid is extra super dead. Zara points out that the robot says that only one can win, but Sienna's like, yeah, why can't we all win? And we leave it at that. We've got more important things to deal with. Where did you last see your brother? He was out in the woods looking for the dinosaur, and he thought it was cool, so he wanted to see it up close. Hey, CGI renders are expensive, so let's just... Let's just not for half the scenes, but let's give these kids their lines as long as possible so we can... enjoy them. So the plan is for Sienna to take the gun and head out to rescue Peter. Or what's left of him, anyway. While Maddie stays at the hotel with Zara and Sam, and they, uh, try not to die. But soon, weird noises abound, and discovering a hand in any baseball bat, Zara arms herself and goes forth to investigate. But that just means Sam and Maddie are alone when the invisible growling beasts return, so they must run, fleeing to the dining room, but unable to hide from the hungry Velociraptor. Peter. But never mind that. Look, Peter's fine. How? Point is, Maddie is in danger. Fortunately, the raptor teleports about 30 feet away, giving her the chance to escape. But what's this? The door is... Uh, well, well, she ain't opening it. But there's a handy-dandy cupboard right over here. But wait! Uh, kid, that only worked in Jurassic Park because Lex was tricking the raptor with a reflection. If it comes right at you, it's, it's not gonna end so well, just saying. Oh, never mind, she's fine. Because they ain't springing for an effects shot of that raptor easily bashing through a half inch of plywood. I'm sorry I ran off. I'm just wondering if the kids are maybe method acting and they just had that poor kid stay up for like 30 hours before they recorded his scenes. Reunited with Peter, Sienna calls up Maddie like, How are things? And the kid's like, Yeah. <laughs> Sam's dead and Zara ran off to God knows where. And where that happens to be is in the evil lair of evil Mr. Dean, as she is in on it. Still three left. And you want to make the last three fight out amongst themselves? Oh, you're nasty. 
it wouldn't be the worst thing this movie has done. And the two of them bet on which of them they believe will be the last one standing. My money's on Maddie because she's not the one currently in the so-called kill zone surrounded by dinosaurs. <laughs> Alright, well, if the intro is anything to go by, all of them are most likely going to die, but you get what I mean. But Sienna's fine. <laughs> Look, outside of that first shot, they don't bother to render the raptor for any more of this scene, so it's just her screaming like a madman and dragging her kid out of the cave. Seriously, between that and Peter's deadpan expression, it just kind of comes off like she lost her mind. TAKE THAT, INVISIBLE BEASTS! Also, as far as setting the game up and betting on its outcome, Zara has a bit of an unfair advantage as she's still heading in and fucking with the pieces, taking Maddie out of her impenetrable cupboard and leaving her to die at the hands of a hungry raptor! Later, first, Sienna has to get back a hell of a lot faster than it took her to leave and be reminded, hey, only one of you can survive and claim that prize money. So who's it gonna be? Only you and your two kids left. But who should she just so happen to run into but Zara? She's like, hey, that makes four. What gives? You weren't supposed to figure that out. Clever girl, eh? Why do these... Terrible movies always feel the need to reference films far better than themselves. Me and you gonna have something in common. Yeah. I watch my mom die too. Oh, how can you have that high of a body count when you are this bad at murder? The disco ball explains that only dinosaurs can kill people, so they activated their super duper convenient anti-ballistic firearm disabler. Too bad they don't have a bitch slap disabler. Well, we got barely any movie left, so Dean comes down like, hey, name's Dean, I run this joint, and the game's near over. Also, we're gonna ignore that no human interference rule because no one complains about Zara beating the crap out of Sienna because she fails to do anything anyway as a raptor attacks, tearing her apart, while everyone else very leisurely exits the hotel. But what's this? Dean refuses to let the game end. Still got some time left and there's only supposed to be one survivor. But wait! She has a gun too and says that Dean is also part of the game because he was in the hotel as well. Congratulations, Sienna Woods. For yourself, Peter, and Maddie have survived the night and are the successful winners of this year's competition. So, even if we accept that Dean was actually part of the game and playing it, and Zara, still there was only supposed to be one winner, but... But now there's three, because... Fuck it, who cares? Therefore, happy ending! Dean is eaten! And Sienna drives away the winner of 100,000 pounds. How's she supposed to get paid anyway? The guy that signs the checks is dino food. And anyway, uh, that, that was Dinosaur Hotel. And boy, it was a chore to get through. I consider myself a connoisseur of cheesy cinema, but there is one bad movie that scares me. And that is the boring bad movie. And oh dear lord, Dinosaur Hotel had nothing going for it. The plot was very simple and could have been something, but... Uh, well, uh, you know your bad movies that know they're bad and play into it? And your bad movies that try to be bigger but fail, but fail spectacularly and are fun for it? Well, that ain't what we got here. Dinosaur Hotel is trying to be a straightforward, semi-creative story and plays it absolutely serious, with none of that over-the-top campy charm. And the execution is just not great. Between stiff acting, stiffer CGI animation, and the absolute lack of dinosaurs in any remotely complicated shot, leading to action sequences where the people flee in terror from shit that just ain't there, it's depressing seeing how under this there is at least an okay bad movie, but it couldn't even be put together well enough to shine for the few bright spots the concept provides. Also, they never bothered explaining how they got to dinosaurs, or how you clean up this many corpses without anyone noticing anything going on, but at this point, who cares? At the end of the day, Dinosaur Hotel is one of those sub-90 minute movies that feels way longer and not in a good way. Slow, boring, and nonsensical. Coming in at one floating ball of exposition. Out of five. I will give them this much. This is a hotel where it is very easy to fall asleep. Thank you all for watching. I have been Decker Shadow. And remember, maybe it's a good thing.
the dinosaurs are extinct. What do you mean there are sequels to this thing? I need a minute. Why, 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 why? Who really thought, ooh, people are gonna want more of that? You, you, you want to see a hotel-themed horror movie that's low budget and actually has some redeeming qualities? Well, how about my review of Clown Motel over there? It's a real fun one, trust me. Uh, or there's, there, there's that, whatever it is. I, I need a palate cleanser. I'm gonna go stream it on Twitch or something.